you ask somebody, what is the best cowboy boot? Who makes the best cowboy boot? A lot of people are gonna tell you Lucchese. And these bad boys are $1,000, which is wild, especially compared to the other cowboy boots we've done in the $200 to $300 price range. So what makes this boot worth $1,000? Is it worth $1,000? Do you get anything extra by paying four times the price of your average cowboy boot? Well, we got this pair to cut them in half, to really dissect this thing, see all the different layers and compare them to the previous boots we've done to see if Lucchese's are overpriced or if they really are worth $1,000. This video is sponsored by another American-made company, Tactile Turn Pins. And you guys really liked this sponsorship. They, they told us that a lot of people have been buying these pins, have been using the codes. I love doing sponsorships that resonate with you guys because it just is easier for us to do because we love these pins, you love these pins, Tactile Turn loves that you love these pins, so they sponsor more videos. And the reason that I think you guys like these pins and that the reason that we like these pins is that they align with a lot of the ideals and the things that we love about all these footwear cut in halves, like the handmade, made in America, high quality materials, no corners cut. Um, it's hard to beat the uh, bolt action fidget aspect of this. I catch myself in meetings all the time, just sitting there, just focusing and clicking away. Because it is, it is a really unique feeling in that little action, but also the whole pin is really unique feeling because it's so heavy. And they have several different options for materials. You've got your bronze, you've got titanium, which is shockingly light for how thick it is. And then you've got the pins that a lot of us have at the shop, the copper pins that age really, really cool. If you're into patina for boots, you'll love the way these pins age because here's a little before and after shot of this pin in particular that Nate's been using that's really, really starting to age and look really unique and cool. And they also come in a few different sizes from these little baby guys all the way up to the big chunky. And you can have whatever you want engraved into the little clip here, which is a nice little bit for customization for gifts and for birthdays and holidays, celebrations, whatever it happens to be, your company. And maybe the coolest thing about this pen is you're adding significance and value to a thing that you use every single day in a little plastic pen. You get to upgrade it into something that brings you a little bit of joy every time you use it. And obviously it cuts down on waste when it comes to those little plastic pens. And the really nice thing is you can change out the little cartridge. So once this little cartridge runs out, you grab another cartridge, throw it in. And you also have the, the ability to choose how thick the pen writes and all the different colors. It's just endlessly customizable. So check out Tactile Turn. The links are in the description and hopefully you guys keep supporting these guys because it's an easy sponsor to do and I love these pins. So thanks again to Tactile. So for a brief history of Lucchese, that's shockingly interesting. Sometimes you see these brands around and you just think they're like, oh, it's some established brand that forever ago, whatever. But a lot of these cowboy boots are really interesting, like the Tony Llamas. And a very similar story to Tony Llama because the founder of Lucchese, Salvatore Lucchese, was born in Palmero, Italy in 1868 and was the son of a shoemaker. And then in 1882, he immigrated into the United States via boat at 14 years old. 1883, Salvatore and his brother Joseph set up a boot making shop in Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. 1890, Salvatore and his brothers buy the first inseamer machine in the Southwest US. And then the business continued to grow over the next 20 years and then 1910, Salvatore purchased a theater in San Antonio. So they must have been doing pretty well. And then, and then in 1929, unfortunately, Salvatore Lucchese died at home, but he died in a great way. He died playing dominoes with his family, which is tender. From 1930 onwards is really where Lucchese made their name because they became a staple in culture with celebrities, actors, politicians, and they made some boots for some pretty big names. Like 1942, they made a pair for Bean Crosby. 1944, Gregory Peck. Uh, 1952, Lyndon B. Johnson, the U.S. president, got a pair. 1955, Rex Allen. 1956, Zsa Zsa Gabor got a pair. 1960, Jimmy Dean gets a pair. JFK and Jackie Kennedy, they got themselves a pair in 1961, 15 days before the assassination. So a pretty solid list of celebrities buying Lucchese's and really establishing that brand as that top tier, the celebrity brand, the best of the best. And then a really interesting one, 1982, US President Ronald Reagan presents King Hassan II of Morocco with a pair of Lucchese's. And then in 1986, Lucchese moved to El Paso. And then fast forward 30 more years, and Lucchese's became the official boot of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. So a pretty cool history of Lucchese, 
But sometimes with these, these companies that have a really unique history and are really well known, they really rely on that name and their notoriety to sell their boots at a certain price point that the quality of materials and construction don't always align with. And we timed this video perfectly because we've done one of the top mid-tier boots in the Tony Llamas. We've done the big direct-to-consumer brand of the Tecovis, and we did a hybrid, a few hybrid cowboy boots from Ariat. So now we have a full spectrum, or at least a partial spectrum, to be able to judge this boot off of. Because if we would have done this boot first, there was really nothing to compare it to to see why it's worth a thousand or maybe if it's overpriced, if it's underpriced, or where it stands in that spectrum. Now I'll start getting through this boot, starting with the upper first. And this is a really unique leather because it's a Florence Buffalo leather. And it has a really unique texture. It's almost like that shrunken buffalo texture that has a really nice pebbling on it. Um, but it's really, really thin. It's only 1.1 millimeter thick. The thinnest of any of the cowboy boots that we've cut apart. And even the lining leather is thicker than the outer leather. The lining's 1.4 millimeters thick. So I'm not sure why they decided to go with such a thin leather. But when we grade these leathers, we don't always take into, we don't really take into consider the thickness. We judge it more on the quality itself. So how does this leather stack up? Well, we put the flame to it to see if there was a really heavy top coat on it. And as you can see, it just kind of burns up the grain. So there's a little tiny bit of pigment on there just to give it that nice, even chocolatey color without covering the grain and the texture so much that you can't see it. And if you look really closely at the cross section, there's clearly a grain pattern in there. It's almost the entire grain just because of how thin this leather is. And I believe there's not a single print embossed into this leather because it all looks like it's natural texture because of how much it varies and how much it changes from part of the boot, from, from one part of the boot to the other. So I would say this is, so far the only A grade leather that we've seen in the cowboy boot series because of how nice the leather actually is. But I do wish it was a little bit thicker. For a thousand dollar boot, I just wouldn't really want my boot to be the thickness, if not even a little bit thinner than most sneaker leathers. And it has its pros and cons. You know, the, the thinner the leather, the softer it is, the more malleable it is, the more it's gonna break in faster. And the easier it is to get these really high detailed stitching in the, the shaft of the boot. But I just feel like the bare minimum of what I would want for a thousand dollar boot would be at least a 1.5, if not two millimeter leather on my boot, just for the longevity sake. And on that note, we wanted to do the rattlesnake test, a little puncture test to see how well these boots did. And as you can see, not great compared to the other boots. Does this test actually matter that much? Not really, but it does give us a good idea of how strong the materials are. So this boot's kind of shaping up already to be a lot more of just a show boot, like a night on the town, wearing your fancy boots. You're never gonna wanna work in these for any reason, just from the price alone, but also because of how thin the leather is. Then as for the quality of the lining leather, I would say it's a B grade leather. It's got a pretty heavy coating on top, but it still has the grain in it. it doesn't have a texture embossed into it. So it's it's a good lining leather. You're rarely gonna see an A-grade leather for a lining. And then if we start looking at the inside of the boot, there's no insole that comes with this boot, but there is a half sock liner with a little bit of foam underneath. You can see the lemon, web, the, the lemon wood pegs on the inside here that show up on the outside as well. So it's a very traditionally made boot with the lemon wood pegs, no brass nails like we saw in the Tecovis. And you can also see that it is a true Goodyear welt because of the stitching that goes along the outsole. So it's a 270 Goodyear welt. And as you can see, you've got a couple puncture holes in the bottom here to see how puncture resistant the outsole was with the midsole and everything in it. And it's pretty on par with everything else. So I'm assuming it's a very traditionally built cowboy boot with the leather insole, the leather outsole, and that's about it. And then if we look at the heel, you've got a rubber top lift with a full leather heel stack. And one thing I really like about this heel stack is if you look really closely underneath the arch of the boot, this isn't just a full leather heel stack that they've, they've sanded down to fit perfectly. You can see those leather layers are contoured and each layer is skived down to thinner thicknesses to create that contour rather than just sanding it. And one of the biggest selling points of this boot that we haven't seen in any other boot is that these are completely handmade in Texas. Everything else we've seen is, is made in Mexico or China or ev everywhere else except for the United States. So I think that's a big part of where the price comes in. Is it worth a thousand dollars just because it's made in the United States? Well, that's what we're gonna try to figure out by cutting it in half because we have several cross sections to compare it to. So now let's cut this thing in half and really find out the truth of what's in Lucchese's. Are they really worth a thousand bucks? Is it all hype? Let's find out. So let's cut these thousand dollar boots in half. I, it still is painful. You know, we've cut several boots and shoes that are thousand dollars, but it's still hard to do. <laughs>
All right, we got them cut in half, and these these cowboy boots are gonna be the death of my bandsaw. We need to get a new blade because we're just grinding through these at this point. But let's see what's inside. So zero synthetic materials through the entire sole construction, which was really unique amongst these other boots that we've come apart. Because we've got the Ariats, Tecovas, and Tony Llamas to do some quick comparisons to. And all of these boots have synthetic materials all the way through the sole construction. But if you look at the Lucchese's at four times the price, you've got this really thick veg tan heel counter, which is by far the best heel counter we've seen in any of these. It has a little bit of foam, which is technically synthetic, but everything else is nailed and glued. And you know what? Just kidding. The Rand is also synthetic on this one. But other than that, okay, actually one more. And the toe stiffener is synthetic as well. So the Rand, the toe stiffener, and the foam underneath the heel. But also the, the problem with this toe stiffener is this, we got the really pointy, cool looking toe just to see what, how it was structured and how they build these. And you, you have to have a synthetic counter to, to get that shape and to maintain that shape. So the vast majority of this boot is all leather and all natural materials, which, which is a sign of a higher quality boot. And the one thing that didn't really impress me was this lining. This is a really, really cheap leather. You can see right here that it's already split. And I don't think this is from me cutting it apart or anything we've done here, because that looks like it's, it was done while the boot was being lasted. It looks like it has the grain in there, but I think it's a pig skin. It's just a really loose, part of the pigskin. It probably this particular pair is made from the belly, so that's why it's so stretchy and nasty looking. And another difference in this boot is instead of having cork through that little section there underneath the, the ball of your foot, it's leather. And other than that, it's basically the same. There's not a whole lot else different about this boot, which is really surprising. You know, I thought for a thousand bucks you'd see something different. Maybe, I don't know, I, I, I guess there's, there's only so much more you can put in a cowboy boot. So what do you actually get for a thousand dollar cowboy boot in the Lucchese's? You get a boot that's actually handmade in the United States, which has a lot of value. You get A grade leather, basically on the outside, definitely not on the inside. You get the Lucchese name with the whole history behind it, everything that Lucchese stands for. You definitely get a little bit finer finishing throughout the entire boot. It's just a little bit better built and a little bit more finished in these other boots. And other than that, you're kind of just paying a thousand bucks for the name brand and the fact that it's made in the United States, which to some people it's worth. You know, a lot of people want to spend the right amount of money to invest in domestic production and products that are made in the same country that you were born and raised in, which I think is totally fine. I think if the people that can afford to pay the premium for an American made product, there should, you shouldn't feel bad about that. There should be no shame in that at all. Overall, are Lucchese's overpriced? They kind of are. You know, if you look at this objectively, they're, they're a pretty pricey boot for not a whole lot of difference between these other boots we've cut in half. And I'd be curious what you guys think is a higher quality than Lucchese because there's still some room for improvement. And I'd, there's gotta be a cowboy boot out there that's the best of the best, no corners cut, no synthetics, everything's done to perfection. It's gotta be out there somewhere. So let me know what you guys think of this video, what you think of Lucchese compared to these other brands. And don't forget, we are releasing, I'll give you the full look. The whites collapse, speaking of cowboy boots, and we just finally finalized the knife pocket kit. We're gonna have this knife pocket that has like the little swoop on it for a little bit bigger knives. We've got a symmetrical knife pocket, and we've got a little stash pocket that'll fit your, your credit card, your ID, or whatever else you wanna put in a stash pocket. And we're only doing 200 pairs of these with whites, and they go on sale on September 15th, and I think they're gonna go pretty quick. So if you're not signed up for the limited edition email list, sign up for that below, sign up to that below, because we're gonna send you sizing info, detailed, anal <laughs> detailed, detailed breakdown of all the different pieces, all the all the leather info, everything you need to know before you purchase. So be sure to sign up for that. And thank you guys so much for everything you do. And uh, let me know if you're a little disappointed in Lucchese because I, I come away from this a little disappointed in Lucchese. So thank you guys. See ya.